Well, I started filming and I thought, oh no, my hair looks too greasy. And then I thought, no, hold on a minute. Why am I doing all this without showing everyone what I'm doing? Perfect um, hair day living proof. I know I've used this before, but it's such a great product and so many people get it wrong. As you can see, I look like something out of um, Grimm's fairy tales. <laughs> the little wicked white witch of the West. Um, and you wouldn't want to go out like that. <clears throat> Hello everyone, by the way. <laughs> I did um, yoga class this morning, a very relaxing, restorative flow, which was gorgeous. Um, and I haven't got time to, I had time for a shower, but I didn't have time to actually wash my hair. And I wanted to show you a quick smoky, not a quick smoky eye. I wanted to go through um, some technicalities of a smoky eye that I noticed on a friend the other day who'd done um, quite a heavy eye. She wasn't really used to wearing a heavy eye and she put it on. I thought, ooh, ah, ee, few little things there you could have changed to make it um, a little bit more flattering. So I thought I would just jump on here and um, before I go and pick up my son and go to this event, show you how to do a quick smoky eye. NARS have a new palette called Endless Nights, which is lovely and beautiful and bearish, or, I see you can't talk back to me, can you? I was going to use this one by Tom Ford, which is something I haven't used for a long time. Um, which one shall we go for? Or well, let's go for the new NARS one. If you like this palette, I love all these cool tones, I can do that another week, no problem at all. Um, but whatever colourway that you want to do, I'm going to try and not maybe do it in the way that I would necessarily at work, but in a way that maybe helps you to see what you're doing with your varying eye shapes. And as you can see, with a little bit of rubbing of my head, that's all beautifully absorbed and um, I've got um, cleaner, more acceptable hair for a film, right? Put a little bit of light on here I'm and chasing the daylight um, because it's, what is it? It's only ten past three. And we're losing the light. Right, okay, so, <clears throat> Rules of a Smoky Eye. I did just do a little bit of inking with my Nabla um, eyebrow pencil, which I just sliced through. If you want a more kind of detailed refresh brow tutorial, I'm happy to do that, because I know I've been quite lazy with not doing my brows, whereas I used to do them all the time, because obviously I've had a little bit of um, tattooing done on them. So I just basically slide up um, and always do my brow shape. That's something I would definitely recommend. Um, and also do your brows. I'm sure I've said this to you before. Do your brows before you do any of your makeup because, and also run a little bit of micellular water on a um, cotton bud and over your eyebrows. If you're one of those people that finds that your eyebrow makeup fades, uh, maybe the cold pencil just dilutes or the ink doesn't stay or the powder just becomes invisible whatever the texture that you use or the formula that you use, if it doesn't last, use some micellar water, scrub through your brows, then apply your colour, then do the base and everything else because sometimes your skincare gets caught in your eyebrows and it just doesn't have a dry skin to really adhere to. So try that. I've gone super close. One, because I'm like snuggling towards the um, light to kind of get a good light, which I know is going to go in a minute, but also because I was <laughs> trying to give you an extreme close up. I've got a tiny little bit of base on um, and I use the CC Plus Nude Glow, which is a great product. Um, you can see it's not that glowy, but it gives a quite nice coverage. So, two schools of thoughts. If you are a mucky pup when you're putting on lots of eyeshadow and it always falls down, just do your eyes first, but you want to create a nice little base on your eyes first. Now there are the options of using setting sprays. If you have a setting spray, spray it on your hand and then place it straight on the lid or you can use the eyeshadow primers. NARS is a great one and Urban Decay are my favourites. If you haven't got any of that then just take your foundation across very very lightly. You don't want to create too much of a texture for the colour to absorb to and then separate to. You want to keep it quite light but what you want to do if you are one of those people that has um, uneven skin tone on the lid. Maybe it's more pink, maybe it's more blue, or just generally uneven, which is very, very common because the skin is very thin here. Then just take your, I'm not saying concealer, literally your foundation, just over with a nice soft brush. Okay, you'll be able to use your brows then as a point of reference. And just going through the brow alignment, outer corner of your eye, 
in a corner of your eye, sorry, out of the corner of your nose, in a corner of your eye, that's the starting point. The highest point doesn't matter so much, but there is a line that goes right across your pupil from the corner of your nose that should give you the highest point. The most important, well, actually either side is the most important because our brows do tend to shrink the older we get, or for many reasons, actually. Um, the, look, I've, I've actually fallen short, so corner of the eye, corner of the nose, I could do a few more hairs. And it does, um, actually, when you're looking straight in the mirror, well, I've got a new mirror I must show you as well, which I've been quite happy using. Um, it does seem that it's longer than it needs to be, but honestly, especially if you're doing a smoky eye, you need to have that structure and width on the outside. So let me see if I've fallen short here. Not too bad, but you know, just for good measure. You just need a steady hand with this. This is the lightest colour, I think it's called blonde, something rather, ash blonde. Before I forget, so this is the light that I've got, which I'm just looking at myself. I'm not gonna do it like that because it will just throw back the camera at you. It's called Ease Hold, but it's got um, uh, side panels with light on, which really helps. I just got it from Amazon. Um, and it's really nice because I've got the light either side. It's not just the light from straight on. Ease Hold, E-A-S-E -E Hold, um, we'll put a link in for you. But for those mornings and for those little chinny chin hairs, mm -mm, um, that's great for. <clears throat> right, so we start there. Again, you may want to start with your layer of powder. I don't tend to powder because I quite like my eyeshadows to absorb the oil because I feel that it helps them stay. You'll need an eyeshadow brush that is nice and firm and tight. We're using the two, three, four by Zoeva. So nice and flat so you can pack on the colour and push in. The most important thing when you're doing a smoky eye, and let's just do this part here, is that you keep this area. I've taken this beauty pie, this is a really light one, 150 shell, and I'm going to use that line that I did for my eyebrow because I don't want any more colour coming from there, okay? Because if I bring the colour down, it, it's just going to bring my eye down. Also, here. Now, a lot of people, not normally would apply the concealer, but it's right in the inner corner of the nose. I noticed that my girlfriend had sort of lost the shape of her eye and she'd gone far too close. So just for the sake of this lesson of us seeing our faces and seeing the shape of our eye, and this, work for, this works for all eye shapes, I'm just going to kind of keep it sort of mucky pup like that so that you can do the same and see whether you can actually get the same finish at home. We can just soften it, it's a nice creamy one. Anyway, um, so you, you have that in your mind's eye, you want to keep it light here and light here. Now, your smoky eye is the darkest possible shade from the lash line, from the bulb of the lash outwards and then it diffuses. That is the most flattering type of smoky eye. So that said, we're going to go in with the darkest shade and we're going to wedge that right across the lid. I haven't used this palette, so I would imagine that the colour payoff is going to be pretty good. Wonderful. So this is the colour, really, really nice. Oh, it's like velvet, as in the way that it looks and the way that it goes on. Um, this is going to be my darkest shade and I'm going to place this all along the lid here and we can blend out but the most important thing is that you have that intensity around the lash line which will help with the mascara. Now for this particular look I may go underneath but I'm going to leave the underneath to a little bit later. So let's do the other side. We should do one eye and one eye not. Oh well we've done the concealer. Let's just do two. Two for the brass of one. So that is even without going back in to the eyeshadow, just to let you show you. It's amazing how piggy you can make your eyes look so quickly, right? By putting makeup on in the wrong way. So pushing that on, doesn't have to be perfect. The most important thing is that you're getting the color right to the lash lines, that when you look straight at someone, that's where the richness is. So let's pop in with some more color. So whatever color way, just keep to these rules, dig out a nice palette that you've got at home, maybe you've had for a few years or whatever, it doesn't have to be new, and try and follow these rules and see whether it makes a difference. Right, so you get your colour on, 
then we'll just get a nice sort of firm blending brush, okay? Because we want to dissolve this color. So you go right over the color, use that color on your brush, so you're not adding any more color. So you don't put the blending brush into the eyeshadow and we'll put, oh God, I knew that would happen. I'm just gonna sweep that out just so there's not any excess that I can blend in with the eyeshadow. <coughs> And it's really nice that I can keep that bit nice and clear by having that there. It's a really good memory point. That blends really well. So you want to kind of blend that colour right up into the socket. And the firm brush, see the difference in the brush really just helps you dissolve that colour from a really thick velvety colour into something quite soft and you can see already how that's starting to open out the eye. So buff the line, buff the line, buff the line. Yes it takes a little bit more time but just go with it. So the socket isn't the darkest point right? You haven't gone dark with the socket, you've gone dark around the eyes. Maybe that's where my friend was going wrong. It's just, this is a sort of, it has no rules obviously, but this is a kind of universally flattering um, eye way to, to smoke up your eyes. And also I'm just trying to simplify it. Right, that is good so far. Right, it's kind of throwing me off. So let me blend out. Oh, just typical, some builders banging around. I hope that's not annoying, sorry. Blend that out. Again, that's just a nice soft concealer anyway. And I hadn't hadn't perfected my base, but it's quite nice because that just gives you that nice little wing out there, sort of reminds you of your face, the shape of your eye and where to kind of stop the colour from going. And you can just get a little cotton bard and micellar water, but it's a common area that you don't want to darken. That we can end up dribbling our eyeshadow into. Let's clean up my eye there. Okay, right, so now I can really push that colour without being so brave as not to go into that concealer. Now, if you want to give a little bit of width to your eyes, if your eyes are close together, you want to add the light in the inner corner. So, for instance, with this palette, we could probably use either this one or the kind of paler pink. Let's use the paler pink. So if you've got eyes that you want to give a little bit of width to, add the lighter colour. No, that's not light enough. But that's fine. I'm going to do a wash of this anyway over the eye because it kind of makes it look really cool. And it doesn't matter now because we've got that depth right by our lash line, right? So this is a really beautiful pinky toe that is much darker. Well, I guess it's laid over the beautiful aubergine anyway. But if you want to add light, let's go in with, let's see, I think that's going to be too cool. Let's try it. No, that doesn't work for me. I'm going to clean the brush. Let's go in with a goldy shade. That's better. That's better. So the gold shade can lift that area. I don't really need too much. I have to put a little bit of white first so it blends silvery colour. Lots of colourways this palette can be done in nice. Good, so you can place that there. <clears throat> if you want to open out your eyes, you can then place a nice lighter colour across the lid here to catch that light, which will kind of lighten the whole smoky eye. If you've got small eyes, this is a really great little hack to add that kind of little bit of light there. So where you place this shimmer can really affect the shape of your eye. So I'm just gonna place that across there. It's a really nice glow. And this light is also quite soft. So already now I've got a little bit of um, a lighter application. It's not so velvety, but I did quite like that darkness to be fair. So make your eyes a bigger, lighten it in here. Oh, just one second, Mr. Paceman's here. 
Um, now, if you've got quite wide eyes and you want to kind of make them look a little bit tighter, you can take your cotton bud and use the dark shade that we had and fill that in on the outer side. So there's three parts of the eye that you can colour. Obviously, I've gone a little bit haphazard now because I'm showing you all different styles. But the darker shade will pull in a broad face and the lighter shade on the inside will widen. So I'm just going to put that there. And to pop the eyeshadow, or you think you've gone too much with it, just put that really lovely shot of light down the centre. And unlike what I did, use the most contrasting colour um, because that will give you the greatest um, differentiation in colour and kind of give your the oval effect of your eye. Now, of course, you can go in, I'll show you with a pointed eyeshadow tip. This pointed eyeshadow tip, this is one by Morph, I think. No, Beffa. And you can use the tip to go in and define and push back your socket if you want to. But that is all that you really want to do. And you can connect that to the outside. But you don't really want to take that colour anywhere more. It's a bit like me teaching you um, to do your uh, blusher, where it's very small parts of colour that make all the difference. The dark sort of just balancing with the light. And I'm just going to bring that round to just do that socket, but you don't want the eyeshadow to really, really spread. So it needs to blend in with the other colours. Again, keeping it lifted. So we've got a little bit of a, a mix of kind of like warm, aubergine -y, soft metallic colours, but I think they still look really flattering. Right, so I think I'm going to go in with, I did have a berry, get a Victoria Beckham berry liner. Let me just see if I can add that in. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to put that along the top and then I'm just going to smudge it. But again, if your eyes are going down, you don't want to bring your eyeliner down. I've literally finished the last lash before it goes down. So if I can just do it along here, it's just on top. These are really creamy. And I like the warmth of the red but I'm not taking it any further down. Okay, so I just blend that in really inking up the lash line. Okay, now I personally love a lovely black waterline with a smoky eye, but I love the gradient of colors. So, oops, that clearly needs a little sharpen or a little softening. Let's try that again. These Dual ones always work beautifully. Here we go. Um, I like the darkest colour, even with really small eyes, to be on the waterline and then stretch it out. And just on that inner corner there to blend in with the brown. Now you can see as the eye sh shadow progresses that that starts to make the shape of my eyes like quite tight. In here. It's very, very soft, this pencil. You can see that my eyes are not watering, so I'm just going quite delicately. Um, I think when you start bringing the eye... It's typical. It's the gardener's, sorry. <laughs> not my gardener's, the gardener's office. I think the tree cut down. Great. Um, I've lost my train of thought, sorry. I like the intensity to be on the waterline so you get that really sharp effect. So you can see my eyes you can see this kind of lifted effect, but it looks very, very smouldery. I'm just going to make sure that that is still not, that's better. You see how this looks much softer and the wash has gone up, whereas this is looking a little bit tight. So <clears throat> it's just literally using the remnants of colour on that brush. So you get a subtle hues. It's very, very delicate. That's why it's nice to work in the light. See how that's really softening now, but just in that area. 
in the 80s you'd put like a big white sort of silvery highlight and you can use that with a little bit of um, concealer or just a very flat colour but with this sort of smoky eye with this kind of style it's all about the intensity and the smoulderiness but it's still got a little bit of shape okay so obviously the eyes look quite tiny so now we're going to go in we're going to use the Lancome Hypnose Mascara and the most important thing we're going to use a couple of coats backwards and forwards the most important thing with any smoky eye is that you see the lashes predominantly over the eyeshadow if you've got a strong you know matte black eyeshadow or aubergine eyeshadow like this and your lashes so say you do your lashes like that look at the top ones it's not going to do anything for your eye the most important thing is to really work the mascara so that when you're looking at someone your lashes are the first thing that people see because that creates the opening effect of your eye so you can really go to town and pile on the mascara and because it sort of sinks into the eyeshadow you can stab yourself in the eye like me as well um, it doesn't look that heavy this is a nice um, skinny brush as well so wand so I can get right into the base of the lash line and I've still got that lovely kind of colour from the smoky eye. Can you see how my eyes now, from what we started with, where it was really kind of small, you probably thought, oh no, she's lost, she's lost it. And now the eyes takes effect, but actually it shouldn't read too heavy. It should just read um, kind of like put together. Like I fiddled around with the eyeshadow and I sort of did a few little lessons as I talked you through it um, but for me because there's not a lot of eyeshadow in really hard placements and all the colours are sort of swarming together it still looks lovely <laughs> I hope it does on your phones or iPads or computers whatever you're watching on anyway this is my vibe this is what I like um, the eye is lifted, the eye is bright, it's just making sure that you really don't spread your eyeshadow around so it's not too dark and even if you've got tiny little eyes, if you've got hooded eyes and you think well I like this but I can't wear it because there's no point because I can't see anything, I would agree with you. You want to get yourself a tubing mascara for the lower lashes and you want to take a nice cotton bud and you want to use the colour underneath the eye. Maybe we'll do a little bit of that in a minute. But with a hooded eye, you want to kind of keep it very soft like this, like the difference in colour and texture. Um, but then you want to bring the shape and open the shape of your eye with your brow and the underneath part. I hope I'm making sense. Maybe I need to make it more concise. But um, I think for those of you that have followed me for a long time, you'll know. But I would be curious to see if you did your makeup and put those... Uh, little spots of concealer there, would it help you? See, I actually like the way that this is. For me, I think because of my eye shape and sometimes if I put too much under my eye, it um, pulls my eye down. But we all go through phases, don't we? But I like the intensity of that. I hope you do too. And I hope that's helped you kind of see your eyes in a different way because with this um, channel, I think it's all about seeing ourselves. We definitely, we as in women in general, I don't think, I'm just using the same foundation with a smaller brush, look at ourselves um, sort of correctively. Who wants to look at themselves correctively? But you know, I do look in the mirror. Someone said to me at an event the other day, well, what do you do, you know, what do you, how do you stop negative thoughts in your head when you look at yourself in the mirror? I was like, um, well, I've always had a lot of negative thoughts about the way I looked when I was younger because I didn't look very nice because I had loads of acne on my face. So now I sort of look in the mirror and I go, right, what am I going to fix? But I have my light on my mirror. I have my face looking up, not like that in the mirror, looking at my face because that is really not going to help me at all feel good about myself. Um, so I'm like, right, skin's dry, eyes are a bit tired or actually, you know what, I don't look so bad today because some days we do wake up and we look all right, don't we? And then some days we just think, what on earth happened during the night? Depends how much sleep we've had, right? 
Now, how should we finish this off? Because we'll just do a little finish off. Um, but I actually didn't think at all about that. Um, because I was so excited to get the light, which I have done. And I hope that's a nice little kind of modern tutorial on smoky eye. And it's kind of cool, like I've got my little cosy jumper on, but it's got a bit of black in. I've been, I keep saying, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> Thinking, I hope it looks cool. <laughs> Let's go in with this merit. Now I've put the blush. This oh, pants, Stockholm. I've ruined Stockholm. Um, I'm pushing this at the front of my cheeks to sort of soften it and make the look a little bit more playful and youthful. Whereas I could have gone in with a darker blush and sort of made it a little bit more angular. But I think that will probably be a bit harder for my face. Because now I've gone hard with the eyes. Well, not hard with the eyes, but I've gone a little bit more defined with the eyes than I probably would do normally it's quite nice just to sort of soften it up a little bit so I'll probably keep everything a little bit more neutral might need to tidy that up there it's a bit something a bit a bit messy there at the side let's have a little tidy up of that just to finish that eye off nicely That's a bit better, isn't it? So the blush is very soft. I'm losing a bit of the colour because um, of the light, I think. I so rarely do anything with lights with you guys. I thought this might just sort of suit it because of this new makeup mirror. That looks actually quite nice. So softening the cheeks, I like that. Lips, I think, should just be a beautiful neutral. Oh, great. Um, Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. Um, this is new, I believe. It's new to me. I bought this one and the red one off Amazon. It lasts really well. I bought the red one for a um, red carpet, funny enough. Um, I wanted to give it to my client um, because sometimes you have all your lipsticks but you've decanted them and then you can't always send your actress off with, with a lipstick. And I'd heard these are really good and they are. Great, and I can show you, this will work perfectly, I think. I need to splash it down, I don't want it to be too peachy. Um, so it does set, but I found, um, as in like you feel that sort of texture on your lip. Hmm. I need to bash this down if it's going to work. If I do it with the liner it might help. Um, but the colour really, really, really sets, really lasts, and I found that if I... It's all got that little mark under my nose, it's been there for months. I'm using retinol and everything, that's weird. Um, sorry, I've digressed then, literally. This might be too peachy. <sighs> really do that. <laughs> That really helps to soften the flexibility of the um, lipstick. Now well, that's settled in. I might do a little bit of liner. Or actually, maybe that's just softening it there. Quite nice. Now. I do like my wheelie chairs, so I might just use the Beauty Pie Liner from um, the set. Oh, I've obviously got a timer, that's good. And good to know that the liner actually sits well on top of the lipstick. But I had the red one on and um, I had it on at work, I took a flight, I went to see some friends up in Scotland and I went to bed and I was like, oh, the lip's still on. Right, well, um, as usual, um, I hope that was helpful. I hope you like the look. Maybe it's just a little bit better if it's not so extreme close up. Um, but I hope that you've got a few little tips and let me know if you try them out. See you next week.